And how do you know? How's everything? People, I'm, everything's fine. How's everything with you? Pretty good. Nice to see you. How are the folks? <laughs> Who is this man? <laughs> what a disturbed group here tonight. Holiday season is here. Did you ever notice every Christmas what people always say? That's just what I've always wanted. And you know, half the time on Christmas Day, they are lying through their teeth. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, just what I wanted, Uncle Waldo. Cheese on a rope. <laughs> this I get hungry in the shower. It looks like Rubik, Rubik suit. <laughs> I get in a holiday mood. I do. I'm sentimental, and about this time of... <laughs> Underneath this exterior is a sentimental core. <laughs> yes, and it's rotten. <laughs> now, around the holidays, uh, my memory harks back. I, I do a lot of harking during the uh, holidays. Harks back to my youth on the, on the plains of Nebraska. Around the holidays, it was... Well, we were, we were kind of poor, and we couldn't afford mistletoe. I had to kiss my girl under the poison ivy. That's at least that's how I explained the rash to my mother. <laughs> we were so poor, we didn't even have a Christmas tree. I had to toss tinsel onto a tumbleweed. There was... <laughs> oh. How many of you have been watching all the Christmas specials on television? Have you had it yet? Well, uh... About another ten days of those, I saw Dean Martin's Christmas special the other night. Dean Martin's Christmas at SeaWorld. A, uh... Tender, warm family special, and, uh... That was so successful, Dean's gonna do another one. Dean Martin's Christmas at Ralph's Market. <laughs> Dean is gonna uh, put on earmuffs and sing Christmas carols from the frozen food section. <laughs> PBS, that's the, uh, educational channel. Have you seen their Christmas specials? They had Carl Sagan's Christmas special on Pluto. <laughs> Last night. The special guests were the Frelb sisters from Moon Mylar 28. <laughs> and Carl comes out and says, Welcome to the best of billions and billions of Christmas specials. <laughs> it was just last night I saw that. <laughs> oh, I have an announcement. Post office has announced me, announced, not announced me. <laughs> They've told me to announce to you. Sometimes I get my prepositions mixed. And my verbs sometimes are not in the right order, but it'll all come out fine. Um, what was I talking about? Post office Post has office asked me asked to tell you to save time, to speed things up. Make sure you mail your Christmas packages early, get the right zip code, and break your own packages before mailing. <laughs> The mails are a little slow at times. I got a Christmas card from President Reagan, but that's when he was president of the Screen Actors Guild. <laughs> See, he one time was president of the Screen Actors Guild many years ago. How many years ago? Uh, never mind that. <laughs> People say that this year is uh, Christmas shopping is depressed a little bit. The stores are not doing the business as they thought, and... Even a famous street like Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills, they say it's, uh, it's quiet down there. Have you been on Rodeo Drive, people from out of town? Should go down there, take a look. Yes. The most expensive street in the world. Only place I know in the world that the parking meters take Krugerrands. Those are, those are gold coins. Big ones. But I've been shopping lately. I'll get, I'll get cooking here. This is, this got, everything can't be a hill. Sometimes we have hills and valleys. The electronic stuff. You cannot go into a toy store without everything is electronic nowadays. Everything's computerized. I gave one of my nephews a chess set, and he wanted to know where the remote control unit was to move the pieces. <laughs> Actually, you don't have to use your... Uh, you do not have to use your imagination for anything anymore. Everything is electronic. For Christmas, my wife, Joanna... Bought me Atari Foreplay. <laughs> you made me sink to the. Somebody says, Do I like it? <laughs> it's kind of like Space Invaders. 
a little thing I saw in a novelty shop today. Uh, have, you, have you seen those little uh, glass things you used to fill? Remember, you, I think the first came out years ago, so, the World's Fair. You'd yeah. turn them upside down. They have now one with the L.A. skyline. And you'd shake it, and it fills with soot. <laughs> Well, there's some interesting uh, kind of warm pictures uh, from Washington yesterday of the uh, Reagans and their Christmas tree. He, uh, he walked into the East Room of the White House where they had the Christmas tree and saw that there were only two branches left on the Christmas tree. And he says to Nancy, what? he said, what happened? And Nancy said, well, you asked David Stockman to trim the tree. <laughs> so far, so bad. <laughs> Did you hear that... President Reagan temporarily lost his nuclear code card. No. During the, that unpleasantness back in Washington, he apparently for a while carries with him all the time a nuclear code card, which only the president has in case uh, those are orders that he sends out on this little card in case we have to get into a nuclear war. And he it was missing for a while. Mm -hmm. that kind of scary? Turned out that Nancy had found the card and Charged three gowns on it at Saks. <laughs> That's not true either. I just made that up. Would you like to hear a little scientific news? It's kind of a, yes. so exciting. Yes. Thought you would. This was in the paper today. It's a little hard to believe. Two scientists are in Africa searching for what has been reported a dinosaur. Now, how many of you saw that in the paper? Heard about it? Not making it. According to some pygmy warriors there, they have seen what they thought was a living dinosaur in uncharted Africa. They said it's about 35 feet long with a huge long neck, a big tail, and a little teeny head. They think it is a dinosaur, and they are investigating it. I think they should investigate what the pygmies have been smoking. <laughs> Weird. You've seen those before, haven't you? Yes, all right. Long sure, dinosaur, little, little tiny head. Little yeah. tiny head. <laughs> Tonight, we have, we have for you tonight, one of the brightest writers, the most literate writers in the world today, Mr. Gore Vidal, is with us tonight, who is always fascinating, and with some, po some more animals, one of them we almost lost earlier today. We've, uh, he's on his way here now, believe it or not, true story. Jim Fowler is here, who used to work with Marlon Perkins on Wild Kingdom. You could always tell the two apart. Um... Jim was always the one doing the heavy-duty work. Uh, Marlon did the commercials from Mutual of Omaha, and they would cut to Marlon, and then Marlon would say something like, uh, while Jim is out in the Amazon River trying to give him the giant crocodile a vasectomy, <laughs> I'll, I'll be back here in my tent fixing up this picture of stingers. <laughs> anyway, so Jim, and we lost this afternoon, he had a lizard, apparently. A seven-foot lizard, lizard yeah. and they lost it. <laughs> True story. They found, no, they not lost it here. They lost it out of the LAX, the airport. Apparently, they went out, they found the lizard. It is now in a limousine on the way to the studio. <laughs> now, can you... Now, all I can picture is some wino standing on a corner. <laughs> And this limo comes by yeah. with a seven-foot lizard <laughs> looking out the window. <laughs> anyway, thank you for coming. We'll be back in a moment with all of those things. <laughs> now seize the moment and give someone Revlon's beautiful new fragrance, Scoundrel. We'll be back. Thank you. I have an album here I'd li like to mention because it was put together by the assistant musical conductor, Sheldon Cohen, Shelley Cohen of The Tonight Show, called Christmas with Friends, featuring Ed McMahon. You do the, what was the night before Christmas? Mm -hmm. Narrating it with uh, Doc Severinsen and Tommy Newsom, and it's a very nice album, and Doc's trumpet solo and White Christmas. It's this beautiful. Album. If you're looking for some very nice, nice Christmas music. I'm very proud of that. It this is not very well. So. Christmas with Friends. I do a reading piece on there about the life of Christ, one solitary life. You know yeah. that piece? It's so beautiful. Do you do, can you remember the whole night before Christmas? No. You tried me that one night. Remember you tried that? I couldn't even get the, all the reindeer straight. All right. Let's see how many reindeer you remember. 
Oh, not all. Go ahead, come on, just just start off. On Dancer, on Prancer, on... Don Don and Don Blitzen. And Vixen. Blitzen. Vixen. That's about it. Cupid. Cupid. And Murray. Murray. <laughs> Murray. We didn't talk too much about him. And yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's called uh, Christmas with Friends, and that's what, that's what it should be. Now, each year about this time, we have done this for, I don't know, what, 15 years or mm. something? We get some letters from the post office in New York, although we could probably get them from Los Angeles post office. And as you know, most post offices receive thousands of letters addressed to Santa Claus in care of the North Pole. And before we send these on to the North Pole, to Santa, yes. we intercepted a few, and uh, the post office passed them on to us. And I'd like to mention the New York post office has made letters like these available to anybody who would like to help out a child at Christmas. I'm going to give you the address first, and I'll give it to you later again. If you'd like a letter, I wish to mail in a donation. The address to write is Santa Claus Fund. I think we got it right there. General Post Office Building, room 3023, New York Post Office, New York, New York, 10001. Or you can just send a donation to the Santa Claus Fund, the same address, General Post Office Building, room 3023. Uh, or if you're in New York or any large city, you can probably drop by the post office, and they have special places where they keep these letters before they send them on to Santa, because, you know, Santa gets busy, can't fulfill all the requests, kids. So in case you'd like to step in and help. Now, they sent us a sampling of the letters, and some of them are hysterically funny. Uh, and some of them are... Very sad. ...what we are here for. I'll read you some of these first. Dear Santa Claus, could I have two pairs of Sergio Valentes? <laughs> <laughs> Kids now are so conscious that they give you, they give you the names. name. They don't say, give me some jeans. Sergio Valentes. Two shirts to go with the Sergio Valentes. Baby Agatha and a pretty Carla. Love. Uh, last year, I, I think I saw you sitting on the sofa... And I thank you for giving me the kitchen set. You are like a grandfather to me. <laughs> I love you so much because you're so good to me every Christmas. I love you so much, Santa Claus. I really do. I love you, Santa Claus. Oh. <laughs> Veronica is taking no chances at all. <laughs> Some hearts at the Little bottom. hearts at the bottom. <laughs> Santa, Veronica's love runs deep, Santa. <laughs> Here's Santa Claus. How do you feel lately? <laughs> you must be tired because you have to make all them toys with your elves. So maybe you could take it easy this year and hire more elves to <laughs> help you make the toys. That way you won't be that exhausted and you can rest more. Please bring me, and then there's a list. I think Santa put a freeze, didn't he, on the hiring of the yes, elves? Yes, he did, yeah. <laughs> Here's a letter. I'm not going to read you any last names, of course. Look at that. Yeah, well, I'm telling you. <laughs> Dear Santa, I believe in you. Most of my friends don't. <laughs> Two of my friends do. I still like playing with baby things. Here are some things I want. Please try to give me all of it. If you don't. If you don't, I will understand. And here is the list. My pretty pony, pretty curls, legs land legos, snuff land smurf, slinkies, chimpanzee, skunk, turkey, giraffe, elephant, hippopotamus, rhinoceros, deer, ostrich, monkey, otter, dolphin. This goes on for two, three, up to a hundred items. <laughs> That's right. Levi's, rubber, rubber boots, plant rope, sewing kit, light bulb, bush ladder, roof, boxing gloves, Mr. Rogers, paper frames, Brooks barn burner, Sammy Snake, Sesame Street, Watch Utah, Hog Zoo, Keychain, Hawaii, Santa Claus suit, baboon, mouse, bow and arrow, warm whistle, cloud sun, Cheerios. Sincerely, Becca. Lots more, but I'm too tired to write it. <laughs> <laughs> After reading this, Santa's going to be too tired to deliver all that. I mean, that's a... That's a very artistic. Now, kids are smart. They watch television advertising. Dear Santa, uh, please, dear Santa Claus, please bring me the things that says Heather on this paper and bring my father the things that say Father. And what Heather has done has cut out of the catalog all of the things that she wants. This one says Heather, 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 Heather. Heather's Heather, 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 Heather. And over here on the side is Father. father. One, <laughs> one for Father. There's about 12 for Heather, one for Father. Cuts out the actual pictures of Beautiful. the, of the <laughs> thing. Saves time, you don't have to describe them. <laughs> There's Santa, some kids don't like you, but I do. 
bring toys, and that makes me happy. Have a nice Christmas. <laughs> That's it. Right to the point. This starts off. Santa Claus. Route number one. I've forgotten. No Yukon North Pole. That'd be Route right. Number Route number one. one. He's rural. Right. He's yeah. rural, isn't he? Yeah. He's not, yes. <laughs> starts off. Bicycle. Space Legos, microscopes, Star Wars toys, Domino Sonso, and the name assigned Patrick Sonso, revised. <laughs> Disregard earlier letter. I think Patrick got a, Patrick has a copy for his files, obviously. And that's the revised list. <laughs> Darn kids, wonderful. Dear Santa Claus, I love you so. Could you please bring some pom poms for Christmas? That's all she wants, pom poms, and the. They do decorations and they do hearts and everything. Get well, Santa. Love, Joy. <laughs> That's all. Get well. Apparently, it's, he's got Santa's X-rays or something there. I don't know. <laughs> Ask for nothing. Just get well. Okay, we'll come back. We got a few more, and then we'll read some of the ones that really, really are meaningful. Stay where you are. We'll be right back. So, love that. Okay, we're back. We have some, uh... I'll read a couple of more of these. Dear Santa, I want to come and visit you next summer. Please send me any maps and pamphlets you, <laughs> you have available. This comet's still tripping over the moon. Merry Christmas, love, Chris. And it's sent on a postcard from a bar. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Santa, I know I already wrote you a letter, but there are two things I'd... Well, two things that I want for Christmas. I want winter boots, my size is two, and 20 pounds of lasagna. <laughs> and she won't be size two very long, with 20 pounds of... Remember I mentioned we have on the show tonight a lizard? Dear Santa Claus, I want a lizard for Christmas with food. Ooh. I suppose they mean one of those little... Sure, yes. The lady wants... Maybe we'll send him this one. <laughs> Dear Santa, my name is Blaze Sonfor. I have been good 70% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Blaze. Santa's cutoff point is what? 71%. 71%. It? 70%. Anyway, those are some of the amusing letters. Of course, they get thousands more of letters that are... And we've done this every year, and they're almost difficult to read because most of these children usually write for their sisters or brothers or their mother and father, very seldom for their, from themselves. And there's one from Crystal says, Would you please bring me and my sister some toys? Mommy is poor this year. Daddy is not living with us. We don't got a Christmas tree. My sisters are five, and I am eight years old. Uh, dear Santa, my name is uh, Marty. I would like a, a baby doll that talks. I would like to have some new socks. These are the things you get from kids who don't have. They want socks or they want gloves. Socks size 11 and a half. My mother's sick and can't work. And she won't be able to get me anything for Christmas. So if you can, uh, love you, so forth and so on. Uh, I hope you can help my mommy this year because she was very sick. I am 12. My little brother, is, his name is Daniel. And then she goes on about her, her brothers and so forth and what they need. Oh. It's in, incredible, isn't it? Oh. That the children who really don't have anything very often are asking either for their brothers or the sisters or their, or their mother and father. Uh, I've been pretty good all year, and I promise to keep on being good. My brother Tony's good, too. We've never had a Christmas tree because Mom says we don't have money. I saw a pretty one in a book. I would like to see a real one. Ooh. Christmas tree is all the child wants. Dear Santa, I love you so much. I want some toys, but my mother's very poor, and my father died last year. I do good at school. I'm eight years old, my name is so forth and so on. Anyway, these are the kind of letters, along with the amusing ones you get. And as I said before, Christmas really should be for the children. And if you'd like to be a part of that, it kind of gives you a good feeling. So that address again, if you look at your screen, is the Santa Claus Fund, General Post Office Building. There, it's all right there for you. Send a donation, or you can actually go to the post office, and they will be happy to give you a letter or two, and you can take care of it yourself and kind of fill in for Santa. So we thank the post office for sending these, and hope that those children have a, a nice Christmas. Yes. Okay. Indeed. Moving along. Have you written for Santa yet? What do you written want for Christmas? Some... Oh, by Nothing. the way, I forgot to mention. Oh, you we should see mention this. Yes. We have a beautiful set here. My producer just pointed out. He said that's a, a winter scene behind you. <laughs> <laughs> so now I... That's pretty end. That's the... Uh... Carson spread in the plains of uh, Nebraska, isn't it out there? Yes, out yeah. there early in the morning, milking the cows. Yeah, I, can, I can see you out there. <laughs> and so forth. And all these lovely poinsettias. Yes. I always said poinsettias. Yeah. And I got it wrong. Those are yeah. poinsettias. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> all right, 
As I mentioned, Jim Fowler is here tonight. Jim, as you know, is, uh, Jim, I'm sure you'll recognize as the co-host of uh, Wild Kingdom, which has, I think, been on about 20 years, and he also designs wild animal parks. Would you welcome Jim Fowler? Jim. <laughs> Well, now... Those eyes, Johnny. Will you see these normally eyes? Normally, you come out with something I don't even recognize. Obviously, that's an Sounds owl. like we have some bird lovers in the band. Over well, there. yes, I'm afraid we do. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's just a nice little owl, isn't it? Yeah, look at those eyes. Isn't yeah. that something? He's a fa fantastic little animal. He's, this is the gray phase of the screech owl. That's the screech owl. Yeah, and there are lots of uh, superstitions about them, you know. They, yeah, those eyes are uh, yeah. penetrating, aren't they? Penetrating. Yeah. Look at the way they look at you. They just... Yeah. I think he'll, he would sit on your hand quite well. He's a... You notice they have, they have fairly sharp talons, but he hasn't... He's, he's very light. He hasn't shown any tendency to go at people yet. Now, do they... <laughs> do they live on a little... Uh, what they, they have a, a variety of diets. Uh, no, they have a variety of diets. It's mainly right. meat. You know, they eat mice right. and uh, insects. They also go after... This it's is pretty found, good science, don't they? Yeah, it's found in California. It's highly protected right. by law, so you can't have them as pets. Right. But uh, this is this one is especially good. I'm going to see if I have a piece of meat that we can maybe give him. Uh, you always have a lot of things in your pocket. Yeah, you know, uh, I know. It gets a little messy sometimes. Did you ever go yeah. out at night formally when you've had a, a <laughs> meat in your pocket for a week or so? And it's... Matter of fact, <laughs> yes. take that, and you, if you don't mind. That's no. just good chicken. And let's see if he'll take a piece of that. Put it right up in his beak. There you, sure. go. there you go. There you go. Good enough. That that's fine. But the screech owl is well, fascinating. Small. It's the smallest of the birds of prey in America. Oh, the reason we mention that know. because that's right. you have now <laughs> the largest bird in the United States. The exactly. United, and largest a, bird. A beautiful bird. golden eagle. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to okay, give you let our me friend take here. Him back here. And you're going to see and, the uh, the golden eagle. Is a is really the difference between an owl and eagle is is obvious when you see it. This is obviously specialized for nighttime hunting. Right. The eagle is a very majestic creature. It's been used throughout the history of the world as the symbol to go to battle because it's yeah. very majestic and right. noble and all those good things. And they see things, I understand, yeah. when they're in the air, they can see something on the ground from a mile in the air or something. Yeah, a couple of miles they'll see a jackrabbit, and uh, the eagle is a good contrast with this little guy. Okay, that's a little screech owl. Now so, we're going to show you. Now, in order to show the eagle, I'm going to have to get you to help me because sure. this is a... This is a falconer's uh, or a eagle trainer's okay, bag. Okay, what would you like you me to do? Your shoulder. Want me to come with you? Or? Yeah, if you'll step, put that over, and so that the belt, so that the whistle is outside here. There you go. All right. Yeah. And there's a. Okay, last call for eagles. <laughs> you want this here, Jim? Yeah, I leave that there. Okay. And there's a lure here. There we go. Tell you what, that one unfortunately the eagle may be a little hungry, and this owl may be on his diet. So I'm going to hand this owl back to good, good thinking. Thank you. You'll take that. I'll show you what to do that. Right. One second. Oh my God. <laughs> There's a lot of meat in there. I have the foggiest idea what I'm doing. We're going to have outfit. to have the the curtains up to do this properly. What I want to do is show the flight of this eagle. And right. you you have obviously had so much experience with animals in the last yes yes 10 years or so that this is a nothing for you to do this so most guys couldn't do this yes, but I think you're sure, sure. <laughs> what what you have to do this is a lure which is a, right. a symbol for the eagle to come to and if you'll swing that like that right <laughs> What am I wearing this for? <laughs> That's in case. <laughs> what, what, what is in here? You, what, what is That's in, in here? In case you run, run out of meat, there's some more meat in the, there. In case yeah. I run out of meat, there's more meat in there. That's right. But, but when you throw it down, throw it down like so. I don't know. Yeah, okay? With the meat, meat up. Meat up. Meat. I'm going to open a box. <laughs> this is a. It's a rare. It's a rare, oh yeah, you've got to, by the way, <laughs> yes. don't mean to encumber you, but you right. have to whistle with that, too. have to whistle at the same time. Got, wait a minute, right, let me get this perfectly straight. i got to throw it so the meat is up. Uh, right. As soon as I see the eagle, I blow the whistle. You blow the whistle. Right. In case that's not enough meat, he's going to come over here. There you go. <laughs> Jump eagle. Okay. <laughs> And uh, I want to just tell you, this is a this is a quite a rare thing to see. Uh, an eagle that'll fly in this studio is like flying a falcon in a barn. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
So anyway. When do I throw this? I'll one? tell you when to do it and whistle, and I'll open the box. <laughs> and we'll see. Maybe another first. Okay. Now, when I, when I, when the eagle sees you, yeah. throw the lure twice, and then I'm going to open the box right on your head. That's right. Like this. Right. How do I okay, know? Okay. Now, put it down. I... There you go. Pull it. Pull it now. Put this down on the floor. There you go. Now, now pull that, pull that once again. I think she'll come over to it. Now hold it right there and blow the whistle once. <laughs> come on, girl. There we go. Okay, she's got it now. Now let's let her eat it for a minute. Right. And uh, this is a. Now, if you notice. Let me pull her around. You got, it, you got her little, Excuse good. me. For, sure. I'll get her around here so you can see her a little bit better. Okay. She will. She will protect the meat if it's you not try a, to. If I try to what? Take it away. I'm not going to. Okay. <laughs> no, she can protect that meat all night long. No, I need a. I need a piece of meat out of your right bag. Here. Help yourself. Yeah. The hell, it's empty. <laughs> it's empty. <laughs> I forgot. You mean if she would have come here and I didn't have any meat anyway? That's right. Boy, no wonder that. Now, as soon as she finishes this, I, I have to call her immediately back up the fist. I'll okay. show you the... Oh, that's the lure gap. Oh, blow the, blow the whistle again. Come on. Come on. Come on. There you go. Good. Good. Pretty good, huh? That's, that's a beautiful thing. Fantastic. Look at that. Now, it's more... This is a... Uh, Absolutely spectacular. Look at that. I meant to bring the other glove over because that's I want okay. you to that's feel right. the, uh, yeah. Well, let me, let me just show you what, Dude, what that happens to you. I'm out of meat anyway. <laughs> Man, give me a meatless bag empty here. Bag. Sitting here with an empty bag. It wouldn't the, help uh, much. You better keep that bag on because you'll think you're the trainer if sure. you keep that on. All right. If you will hold, uh, let, I'll tell you what I'll do. I have one more piece of meat. Let me set her here on the thing here. Uh, now. <clears throat> now, when she get here, I ain't going to have anything for her to eat. Well, I, I got one right here. The thing to do is be sure and hold the glove higher than your head. I saw it. Excellent. She's standing on the meat. <laughs> she's not. She's not very heavy. She though. can't she's... see the meat, Jim. Oh yeah. It's right, it's on the back. She's standing. Good. She's standing That's on true. the meat. Okay. Get her off. There you go. Okay. Anyway, this. That's enough. <laughs> Right. This is uh, highly protected. This is one of the eagles that's disappearing in the world. And There's no fear for me. The uh, California State Game and Fish are doing a lot of great work. They're buying up some land yeah. that are very important to this that is eagle's truly survival. That's truly magnificent thing. We should not have a, yeah. a bird that beautiful dying. And this is, this is trained by Steve Hottie. He's one of uh -huh. the guys. This eagle cannot be put back in the wild. Right. So we're using it to show people a little this bit about it. When the wings come out, it's fascinating. Right. Thank you, Jim. That yeah. is beautiful. Okay. Again. Do the commercial. What the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> Boys, I think things grow here. You just put a little water on them, and they just sprout right out of your desk. Uh, okay, we have to do this, and we'll be right back. Yeah. <laughs> we promised you uh, there was a... We had a seven-foot monitor lizard, and the lizard has not arrived yet in the limousine, so we probably won't see it. Either that or it ate the driver. We are not <laughs> sure. But we do have something else for you, Jim. This I think you'll recognize. 
We got a little. That's hey. a that's a, ba a baboon, right? That's a baboon. That's a baboon. I say, this is a very, very nice pet little baboon. <clears throat> I think we're going to have to get some food for it. Do you have? <laughs> My bag is empty. Oh, <laughs> Let's see what he does with this. All right. Look at that, huh? They're fairly, like baboons are intelligent. I've got they? a, yeah. Oh, I've got a, and also very hungry. Got to be a little, a little quiet with this guy. He's uh, he's not been on camera before, and he's going to be a little bit nervous. But I think we can, you might uh, have that for him in a minute. The, <laughs> okay, How big will he on. be when he's full grown? Well, he's these weigh about 150 pounds when they're full grown. Come on up. Come on. Come on. You can make it up. He's eating with his mouth Come full. on up. See Johnny. That's right. See Johnny. Uh, you may you may be the not the banana. Uh, anyway, he's uh, these these are <clears throat> these are extremely powerful, Johnny. When they're full grown. That's a male, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it happens to be a male. Yeah, it happens to be a male. He's uh, uh, he's uh, when you when you've been in the jungle as long as I have. <laughs> My, my powers of perception immediately said that that's a male. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's never done that before. I don't know. There we go. There you go. He is a little excited, isn't he? Anyway, just. I was supposed to... Johnny, I was supposed to... I was, uh... I was supposed to... I was, uh... I was supposed to tell you that these, uh, wait on, waited on tables in ancient Egypt. Like that? <laughs> <laughs> Thank this you, waiter. The, I'll have an order of. <laughs> this is the uh, this is the Hamadryas baboon. They're found in North North Africa, and uh, uh -huh. again, this is just a baby, an eight eight month old baby, mm -hmm. and he's growing up fast. Uh, <laughs> he, he'll be uh, growing up right here on the we show. Have a, we have a film. <laughs> You know, we got really a film on this, yeah. That, we uh, really wish yeah. we had more time, yeah, but we're okay. getting behind time tonight, and uh, I know you understand. Right. Uh, so take him and give him a nice cold shower. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Well, look what happened to the best of us. We'll we'll do this first, and we'll be right back with Gorby Dog. Mr. Gorby Dog is here tonight, and uh, Gore is one of the most literate writers and one of the most perceptive wits that I know. Would you welcome, please, Mr. Gorby Dog? Georgia said, what an act to follow. Uh, I feel such an air of depression as, as I entered after that, all that excitement. Nobody told me that you wanted me to bring my lizard because it's on short notice and my lizard has his own television program. That's right. It's called Firing Line. Firing Line. <laughs> you're starting already. You're starting already right from the top. Gosh, they're alarming, those animals. Yeah. Those... Hey, I, want, I want to thank you, first of all, um, well, we were, Joanna and I were in Italy uh, this summer, and uh, you, you were one of the best guides we've ever had in Roman Ravello. We had a great time. Well, thank uh, you. Thanks uh, a great deal to your knowledge and years you spent there, and we enjoyed it thoroughly. Well, you, were, you got very high marks as guests. Yeah. Both you we were. and Joanna, my heavens, he was up at dawn with a blue guide looking at ruins. <laughs> we were. That's after he got tired of looking at us in the house. <laughs> he would go out and look at Pompeii. No, it was a wonderful time, wonderful time. You, get, you, you mentioned depression. It very often happens during holiday seasons, and psychologists say, or psychiatrists, people should not feel guilty getting depressed around Christmas time. Lots of people do. Oh, I think it's quite... Uh, yes, you remember Christmas past, Christmas future, as Charles Dickens would point out, is pretty yeah. grim. Yeah, I think there's an awful lot of suicides around Christmas yeah. time, probably. Much more, I think, around April, when the taxes are due. I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's the time that I slash my wrist. Just, just for the fun of it, I put down a list of names. 
And if, if you were, if it were in your power as Santa Claus this year to bring certain people certain things, I'm just going to throw you a name, and if you don't have anything for them, yeah. uh, what would you bring, for example, uh, the First Lady, Nancy Reagan? Nancy Reagan. I almost said it, I almost said it like Ron. Nancy. Uh, <laughs> Nancy's been a good girl this year. I'm going to give her Versailles. <laughs> Whole palace. She can paint it red. You know, that, that her Nancy's red. And, of course, she has the Marie Antoinette Award for the year as well. That would okay. be my gift for Nancy. How about uh, Jerry Brown? Jerry Brown. Governor of California. Governor of California. An interesting book called It's a Long Way to Mount Rushmore. <laughs> which is... Which is the Harold Stassen story. <laughs> Revisited. Revisited. I think he should study that. How about uh, Muammar Gaddafi of Libya? Gaddafi. Not wishing him well at the Yuletide season, I would give him the CIA. <laughs> <laughs> they cost us $10 billion a year. They are absolutely, whatever they touch is a mess. They are too expensive. <laughs> I'd like Gaddafi to own the CIA. Just take Langley and send it to him. First, they will bankrupt Libya. Secondly, they will probably overthrow him. And they'll be off our backs. So we'll have $8 billion we'll extra money. Let him try to money. figure out what's going on. Exactly. <laughs> you are in the Yuletide spirit, aren't you? Oh, I'm just... How about Alexander Haig? Alexander Haig, I have listened to, or tried to listen to now, for ever since he's been Secretary of State. Since I have not understood a word that he has said, I am sending him to Berlitz to learn English. <laughs> After that, we will know what's really there or not. They call it, ha is it Hagees or Hagisms that they have coined now? I guess uh, he well, does, the syntax does get a little... Uh... Well, it's beyond English. Uh, it's beyond Eisenhower. Because Eisenhower, at least, was deliberately misleading. You know, and he, he always had a plan, but this man just seems, and he looks at you, you know, and begins that stare. I get prioritize. Want to prioritize things. Prioritize, yeah. And rushes into the room. I wouldn't like to be George Bush if anything, heaven help us, should ever happen to Ron. <laughs> George Bush might find a little shoot up in the old office as Alexander the Great strides forward to his destiny. How about, uh, let's take somebody out of politics. Brooke Shields. Brooke Shields? I'd give the kid a dress. Get her out of those jeans. Yeah. Are you, I saw you on a show for one night. It was on, um, I don't know where it was done from. The, the fellow was rather perceptive of an interview. And it, was a, it, was a, it was a long show, and I enjoyed it. I, do you remember know the one I'm talking about? Yeah. It was on CBS Channel, something called Signature. Yeah. It's take cable television. Yeah. yeah, a good show. And he was discussing your uh, possible, your possible entry into the race for... Senator of California, and he kept saying, now, Gore, are you really serious? Now, I know you fairly well. We've spent a little time together. So, uh, are, are you serious, or are you just trying to create a little holiday diversion for people and uh, well, make, make it interesting, or, or what? Well, I think I'm, I'm very serious about... The difference between Jerry Brown and me is that uh, he's interested in elections, and I'm interested in politics. And in bad times, I mean, this is his art form, is running for office. That's why I recommended the Harold Stassen story. Yes. Just, just, he just runs all the time. He just, you sort of see Jerry must hang in a, sort of in a closet in a blue suit. They take him out in the morning. Hi, I'm Jerry Brown. I'm running for, for president or governor and senator. <laughs> I don't suppose this is good for character. I don't think he gets a chance to think much. So I've been going around the state talking about issues, talking about the uh, real, real subjects like why it is that we're always at war with somebody. Where, where, where did this enemy of the week come from? It's Nicaragua this week, it was Salvador the week before. We were going to overthrow Gaddafi at one point, and the CIA said, no, 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 it wasn't Libya, it was Mauritania. And the Mauritanians then got on the phone, why are you trying to overthrow us? You know? Where does this come from? And it comes from something very simple that you saw in Reagan's budget. He said, over the next five years, we're going to spend one and a half trillion dollars Tri trillion. on defense. That's a thousand billion, right? That's a thousand billion. It is more money. Now, where's the war? Who's the enemy? They have to keep looking around. So they start say, talk about the vulnerability window. I love that. Even, even Reagan broke himself up on that one. He was giving one of his interviews, and he said, well, I mean, the Russians are ahead of us here and there, and then there's this vulnerability window. And even...